and welcome back to the second part of our part 8 Epic Next.js Epic tutorial video where we're building our Summarize app. In the previous video, we implemented our search component. So now let's work on our pagination. As always, there's a complimentary blog post that has all the necessary code snippets that we need to help us smoothly work through this tutorial. You could check it out in the description below. So we're gonna start right off the bat. We are using ChatCN UI as our Tailwind library. So if you take a look at components, I am literally using their pagination component that they have available. In order to get it to work, you're gonna have to go ahead and install the necessary components that our pagination component is based on. So let's go ahead and copy this command and let's go ahead and run it to install all the necessary items. Once done, in our complementary blog post, you're going to find all the code necessary once done, you're gonna find the code snippet for our pagination component. So let's go ahead and copy it. And inside our front end, let's navigate to components custom and let's create a new file, pagination component.tsx and go ahead, paste in the following code. And as you scroll up, you could see that we're using some of our previous hooks from next navigation, like use path name, use search param and use router. And then we're importing all of our pagination components from our chat CN UI library that we just installed. So the way our component works, we are going to get the page count to show us the pages available. And we will use use router to programmatically update our URL via the push method. So in order to see how this works in more detail, let's go ahead and import our component inside our summaries page. In the front end of our application, I'm gonna navigate to our app folder dashboard summaries under page.tsx file. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to import our pagination component that we just created. And I think I called it pagination component. That's why it's complaining. So make sure you update the name accordingly. And let's scroll to the bottom here. And we're going to add it right here underneath this underneath our cards. And currently I'm just gonna hard code pagination to count of 10 so we could take a look at what it looks like. So in the front end of our application, we now see our pagination component. And when we update it, you should see the page query being updated inside our URL because we hard coded 10, this is what we currently have, but we're going to pull our page count from our strap application. So now let's take a look at our pagination component in more detail. It consists of two items, our pagination arrow button, which is basically our left arrow and our right arrow button. And what we're doing every time someone clicks, we use router.push to redirect to the provided URL, which is our, going to be our pagination query. If we take a look inside our pagination component, we have a function called create page URL. Basically what we're taking is we're taking the page number and we're creating a new params that's going to be set to our page value and it's going to be equal to our string. So anytime we click either our left button or our right button, it's gonna go ahead, either decrease the page count or increase our page count and it's going to pass the URL with our page query param. So one more time, notice as I update my pagination, our URL at the top is changing to the appropriate page that we want to query. So the next step, just like before, we need to update our get summaries loader to now include our pagination as a query param. So back in our front end project, let's navigate to our dashboard summaries page.tsx file. And the first thing we're going to do in our search params prop, we're going to pull the page count from our URL params. Next, right after our query, let's create a const to store our current page, which is going to be our page number that we're pulling from our search params. And finally, we're going to pass our current page to our get summaries loader, which we're gonna update in just a moment. But before updating our get summaries loader, we do have an additional object that is returned from our strappy data called meta, which includes our pagination data. So we're going to take our page count from our pagination data, and that's what we're going to pass into our pagination component. So now let's navigate to our get summaries loader, and we're going to add a new value here called current page, which is going to be a number. We're going to set a default here. You could pull this from your 
in environmental variables, I'm just gonna hard code uh, page size as four. So there's gonna be four items per page that are going to be shown. And inside our query string, we need to add our pagination filtering. Right after filters, we're going to pass the page size and for the page to query, we're going to pass the current page. If you have more questions or want to learn how pagination works in Strapi, you could learn more on Strapi's uh, documentation by looking up cert and pagination, which is going to walk you through all the things that we're doing here in our application. So now that our pagination component is hooked up, when we go back to our front end, you should see that we only have one page because we only have two items. So what I'm going to do off screen is add three more items so we could test our pagination. So I went ahead and added additional items. So as you could see, our pagination is now working, which is pretty awesome. So this brings us to basically the end of the basic features that we're going to have in our application. For instance, we implemented our account page where you're able to update the profile information as, long, as well as the image. We have our summaries where you're able to generate a summary. You're able to delete and update summaries and we implemented our signing in and signing up feature. And this is really cool because now you have a great path to starting a Next.js and Strapi project covering full CRUD functionality, including pagination, search, logging in, and creating custom middlewares to protect your routes. So finally, in the next video, we're going to take a look how to deploy our Strapi backend using Strapi Cloud. And in the final video, we're going to take a look how to deploy our front end to Vercel. See you in the next video.